Watching this third episode of House of the Dragon has convinced me that when or if Game of Thrones gets a remake that fans are calling for, this is exactly what it would feel like. A political drama with the action and fantasy elements coming second. The early moments of the episode nailed everything you need to know about King Viserys and his brother Daemon. Daemon's dragon is going to have that poor soul's entrails in between his toes for weeks. Viserys wants nothing to do with playing his role as king, especially concerning family matters. But the vultures around him won't stop pecking at him. One guy wants Rhaenyra, one wants to deal with the Stepstones, another wants to see the new baby Aegon sit on the Iron Throne one day. But all Viserys wants is to go on a family hunt and pretend everything is okay. It's been hard to find him likable after throwing his wife's life away, but this episode did it for me. It was nice seeing him not forget about his firstborn child and heir Rhaenyra after something shiny and new came around. It's been three years since the last episode and a lot has changed. We may have missed the wedding between Viserys and his new wife Alicent Hightower, but did we really need it? We got everything in this episode revolving around a birthday hunt in honor of Aegon II that the wedding would have shown. Houses gathering from different locations of Seven Kingdoms while Rhaenyra would have been distant. It seems like the Hand, Otto Hightower, isn't the true puppet master of his daughter Alicent and Viserys after all. His older brother, the Lord Hightower, is pushing Otto to elevate their family's power and status by convincing the king to put aside Rhaenyra as his heir to make room for baby Aegon II. Viserys and Alicent aren't stopping with one child either to secure their line. Alicent is already pregnant with their second child. Viserys might see it as fortifying their lineage, but this is only going to complicate Rhaenyra's rule one day. I love how Viserys is having some internal conflict over the matter of Rhaenyra being his named heir by law. He's a man of peace, but everyone else isn't. That talk with Lord Jason Lannister reminded him of the challenge Rhaenyra will face being a woman in power. The thought of rebellious talks make him show anger in the face of one of his most powerful bannermen. The Lannister twin bros make their debut this episode, and we even get a small Game of Thrones Easter egg with that Lady Redwine with her sharp words. She's no Lady Olena, however. You can't match the tongue of the Queen of Thorns. The Lannisters aren't just a one episode thing. Lord Jason's younger brother, Tywin Lannister, the one described as frightfully dull, Jason's probably calling him that because he's the new master of ships in Corlys Valerion's absence. He's on the small council that has to deal with the nuisance that is a crab feeder, disrupting trade. But like before the war, Viserys wants to hear nothing of it or deal with his defiant brother. A big quote from the books is, let Daemon play at war. This is partially why Daemon is the way he is. His big brother is a pushover, a pushover who's also the most powerful man alive. And the second most powerful man is Daemon's close ally, Corlys. The sea snake wasn't given much to do in this episode, though we got to see even in his old age, he can still fight. It was his son, Lenor, atop his dragon sea smoke that got the Valyrian spotlight. It's about time, he's been a prop for the last two weeks. Even though he's a master dragon rider whose personality is tied with his love of flying, we didn't get a good look at sea smoke in all the dragon fighting, but I'm still hoping each of the Targaryen's dragons have a unique look to them. This dragon's first rider was Laenor, and is described as pale silver grey in coloring. Sea Smoke's a younger dragon, not quite as young as Cyrax, but much younger than Caraxes. Caraxes is experienced in war, the only one on Daemon and Corlys' side fighting in the Stepstones. The Seven Kingdoms have been without conflict for a long time, even before Viserys came into power. Caraxes was once bonded with Daemon's uncle, who died on a battlefield from an arrow to the throat. Daemon and Coles have the life experience of a hundred men between them from their different roles in ruling and travels, but neither have led a war. It took longer for Daemon and Coles to conquer the Stepstones and finally put down Craft Eater than it did for Aegon and his sisters to conquer the Seven Kingdoms because their lack of experience. Caraxes and Sea Smoke's firepower was not going to be enough in the terrain unless they were willing to starve them out for years. This episode essentially showed what happened to the original Targaryen conquerors in Dorne. Dorne is the only kingdom not under the king. They still have never bent the knee. The Dornish dealt with years of dragon fire taking out their people, but the dragons couldn't cut through the terrain. The fighters would hide and come out when the dragons were gone. I was surprised how little characterization Crabfeeder was given aside from creepy cinematic shots, as nice as they were. One of the Valerion's knights say his face is pox ridden and it looks pretty rough. Maybe that's why he's so sadistic in his torture and hiding away behind that mask. Aside from the opening and closing scenes, this was of a series' episode. His family drama has finally pushed him into alcohol, and he almost admits to letting his last wife die to Alicent. He's obsessed with the dragon dream about seeing his male heir ring Aegon the Conqueror's crown, and his baby just so happens to be named Aegon. Viserys also admits to having second thoughts about naming Rhaenyra his heir after the birth of his firstborn son. 
His internal conflict is making him unreliable and inconsistent. He's unsure if his dragon dream was prophetic at all, and just a normal human dream, because so few Targaryens are born with this ability, and he never had a dragon dream again. He asks Alicent, what if I was wrong, referring to naming her heir. Dangerous words to share with the ambitious Hightowers. Naming Rhaenyra to protect the realm from Daemon's misrule or naming her out of love aren't going to stand now that he has a son. After the mess of the betrothal offer by Lord Jason Lannister, where he implied Rhaenyra could live with him back at Castle Rock instead of the Red Keep, she runs off, being chased by the man sworn to protect her. Rhaenyra is finding comfort in her chosen Kingsguard member, Sir Kristen Cole, and they have a little hunt of their own. Rhaenyra decided to let the prized white hair go that's supposedly a sign from the gods, some symbolism of her being the chosen one. You were the chosen one! We're moving away from characterization and onto character progression. Rhaenyra's resentment is starting to show, even in her father's confirmation that she will inherit the throne. Alicent is finding her own subtle ways to manipulate her husband. Otto Hightower completely failed with his suggestion of having Rhaenyra marry baby Aegon. Alicent knows Rhaenyra as well as anyone. Giving Rhaenyra the illusion of her having a choice in the matter is the suggestion she shares with the king, something we'll surely see play out next week in the fourth episode, when Daemon returns to wreak havoc in King's Landing once again. We get some really good moments when the Targaryen brothers are in the same city. Viserys won't have his peace and people flocking to him with compliments that make him so happy when the rogue prince is around. Daemon's pride couldn't handle having his big bro come in to save him with all those ships in his war for the Stepstones. This made Daemon more reckless than he already is. Now we know how far Daemon is willing to go. The man who knighted a 16 year old Daemon is probably rolling in his grave. Nothing is out of the question in a character without a moral or ethic code. Looking forward to hearing what you guys thought of this episode, and particularly Lanor's character. I still think the show needs more qualities, but it's hard competing with Daemon in the same room. I'll see you guys in a few days with another House of the Dragon discussion. Thanks for watching.